I think that on the other side of bravery is fear. And so often fear is mistaken for anxiety. We can live in a constant state of anxiety by always moving. Anxiety is the feeling we feel to avoid the fear underneath. Hey there, my name is Dr. Beth Russell, and I wanna know, what would you do if you were not afraid? Right now, what would your life, your job, your relationships look and feel like if you could be unapologetically you? What's holding you back? This podcast is for anyone that wants to make a change but isn't sure where to start. Let's look inward together and let's talk about you and me, our mental health, our self-care, inner and outer selves, and all that makes us, well, us. It's time to get real, feel the feels, challenge what's holding us back, and connect. This is the Authentic and Brave Podcast. Welcome back to the Authentic and Brave Podcast. Let's jump right into today's topic of bravely showing up for yourself. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word brave? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as having or showing mental or moral strength to face danger, fear, or difficulty, having or showing courage. When I hear the word brave, I often think of the song by Sarah Bareilles when she sings, but I wonder what would happen if you say what you want to say and let the words fall out. Honestly, I want to see you be brave. Today, I want to talk a little bit about brave acts and how each day we can choose to be brave. It isn't always easy. It absolutely can be uncomfortable, but also can help us live more authentically and help us feel more fulfilled. As a social worker and therapist, a large part of my job is helping others to be brave, to say their truth, how they feel, and what is on their mind and hearts. To enter a therapy office or even to reach out to make an appointment is a brave act. So many people think that in order to go to therapy, we have to have something wrong in our lives. People tell me all the time, I'm only here because I feel broken or my partner says I need to be here. And yet I want to clear something up. Therapy is an act of bravery. It doesn't mean someone is broken. People can't be broken. Therapy is a place for learning how to create more loving kindness for ourselves with the help of another person. It's a place to explore our thoughts and emotions and a place to be safe to share who we are on the inside. I think the song Brave that I mentioned a minute ago describes therapy very well. Doing something that makes us uncomfortable is brave. I was talking with a psychic friend of mine the other day, and she pointed out that I often have difficulty slowing down. For me, slowing down and spending time in a mindful way is uncomfortable. I used to fear it. I don't fear it so much now, but I do have to make a conscious effort to do it. So that got me thinking, why do we fear slowing down or being quiet? I do hear this all the time from people. I'm just not into that meditation stuff, or I don't have time to just sit in silence. There's too much to do. And I totally get it. I've often been referred to as a moving target in my life. It's a pretty good image for me, honestly. I'm always super busy and have always loved being this way. My mind is always racing and I love to create new ideas and things. There is a downside, though, to being a moving target as friends and loved ones at different points in my life have lovingly and sometimes not so much pointed out. The thing is, you can't hit a moving target or it's really difficult to do so. I remember when I was in college, I moved home halfway through a semester due to a bout of depression. It was a totally new experience to me and it was tough. It wasn't something that I was really excited to have to do but I knew I needed a break from what I was doing. A friend of mine at the time was also home due to transferring schools. I called her and let her know I was struggling and that I would love to see her. She responded with, well, you're always the one who's so busy, so only if you can find time for me in your busy schedule. Ouch. Being a moving target had caught up with me for the first time. That conversation almost 30 years ago still makes me wince a bit. My being busy had hurt other people and I didn't even realize it. I wasn't able to be present with them the way I thought I had. 
It took me experiencing depression and having to change what I was doing in a drastic way for me to realize that being a moving target was one of my defenses. I used it as a way to be less engaged with others and more to ignore how I felt. Being home that semester changed my entire life. I went to therapy and had to really look at what was going on inside of me, not what I portrayed to others on the outside. What struck me was that so many people in my life at that time didn't realize I was experiencing depression. My outside definitely didn't match my insides. Have you ever experienced something like this? That what you are feeling or thinking is kept hidden from those you care about? I think it's so easy to do, and let's face it, it's often praised or encouraged by others. I did a great job of being that moving target until I couldn't anymore. I was afraid of slowing down and admitting that something wasn't working for me. I was afraid, and when anyone pointed something out I didn't like, I reacted by fleeing and throwing myself into something so I didn't have to feel. Other people's judgments or even their perceived judgments, you know, the ones we think that they are thinking but don't really know if they're true, kept me moving and achieving and far away from my authentic self. When we're afraid and we're in a situation of fear, our body generates a physical response to this emotion by activating the fight, flight, freeze response. I was really good at fleeing for a long time and I didn't even realize I was doing it. The bravest act I took was stopping, admitting I was depressed, asking others for help, allowing myself to feel whatever I was holding on to so deeply, and eventually make some changes I had been avoiding. By allowing this time in my life, I ended up taking a whole new path that I wasn't able to see or even envision before. Sometimes small brave acts end up opening us to things we never knew could be. I was so glad I took the risk. I'd love to know what's been your bravest act so far, or maybe what brave act have you taken today or this week? If you're struggling to find a brave act, what are you afraid of? Why is it so hard to give ourselves credit when we do take a brave step? I think that on the other side of bravery is fear. And so often fear is mistaken for anxiety. We can live in a constant state of anxiety by always moving. Anxiety is the feeling we feel to avoid the fear underneath. Anxiety for me has always happened when I am the farthest from myself and avoiding facing what I'm afraid of. It means I'm doing too much and not for the right reasons. I'm not taking time to recharge. I'm so focused on the future with reminders of the past that I keep moving to avoid what I'm feeling. And I don't focus on myself. I focus on what everyone else needs first. It also usually means that I'm trying to anticipate everyone else's needs or please them without even realizing I'm doing it. I'm afraid of what I might find if I slow down and listen to what is going on inside. I might have to admit some things about myself, my relationships, my work, my choices, and my life that I don't really want to or that I might not like. But what's interesting and what I found is it actually might not be as bad as I thought. When I have slowed down, I realize the fear isn't always bad. It keeps me safe and I face it and then change happens. The problem with fear is that it keeps us disconnected from ourselves and others. It can keep us from trying new things ending relationships that aren't working for us, admitting that we aren't happy in a job or an aspect of our lives, and point out that we're sad, mad, or disappointed as well. What I realized it is that it isn't always the fear that I'm trying to avoid, but the other feelings too. I don't like to be uncomfortable. I don't know too many people who do. And yet I've realized being uncomfortable is a part of growth. I think our job then is to return to ourself and face what we're afraid of. Sometimes fear is rooted in trauma and getting professional help to process it is important. There's no shame in asking for help. Recently, a friend told me about the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Maxey. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend picking it up or at least watching the animated version on Apple TV that was just released. In it, 
there's a great passage and there's so many wonderful things in this book and so many quotes that I could fill an entire podcast just reading them. But this one really stuck out to me. What is the bravest thing you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. Asking for help isn't giving up, said the horse. It's refusing to give up. This quote is an incredible reminder that bravery is refusing to give up, whether that's going to therapy, getting out of bed each day, working through how we feel, or turning inward to assess what we're afraid of, knowing that something is holding us back. Returning to ourselves is a starting point for entering into a conversation with what we are afraid of and what is holding us back from doing something that we want to, feeling something we've been avoiding, or letting ourselves simply relax. What does it mean to bravely show up for yourself and how do we do this? Let's be brave together for a few minutes. First, I'm going to talk about a writing activity that you can do to help dig around a little bit on your insides to figure out what fear has on you and what you're afraid of and really what you want. The last portion will be three actionable steps towards bravery that you can take to get in touch with what's going on inside. Okay, you ready? Here we go. For this activity, you'll want to have a quiet, comfortable space. You will need two pieces of paper. It can be a notebook or a journal or just loose leaf and your favorite writing tool. Maybe you use pencil or pen or colored pencils. It's up to you. For me, I always pull up my favorite blanket and put it over my legs to keep me warm while I'm writing. Writing our ideas on paper allows us to visualize them better and arrange our thoughts in a way that sparks further creativity and knowing. Research shows that writing on paper increases our brain activity and helps us focus. So take a few moments and set up your space. And before the activity, take a few deep breaths. Allow your shoulders to relax, stretch your neck from side to side, and make sure you're in a comfortable position. Take out one piece of paper, and in the middle, I want you to draw your fear. Allow yourself to conjure up an image of what your fear looks like and place it on the paper. It can be anything at all and doesn't have to be pretty. No one is judging your artist ability. You can add words if that helps. Once you are done, look at it, take a breath, and turn that page over. We've acknowledged our fear, and it's still part of us, but now, right now, it's separate from us. And now it's time to do an activity without fear holding us back. Take out the next piece of paper and ask yourself, what do I want? Truly, what do I want? Write down everything that you can think of. Brainstorm. Don't judge anything that comes up. Just give it voice onto the paper. And remember that fear is contained elsewhere, so you don't have to listen to the fear part of yourself. In the center of the paper, you can write the words, I want, if that helps, and then answer it. You can write sentences, words, word bubbles, doodle, or draw. Just get out what you're holding. Allow your inner knowing and desires to come out onto the paper. You may find it difficult at first, but keep going. Allow whatever you feel to come up as you're doing this. Not what you're supposed to want, but what you do want. Keep writing until you can't come up with anything else. And then that's it. You now have a reference for when you are feeling a bit lost. You do know what you want. It is in you. And now you have a reminder of it. Place the paper somewhere that you will see it once in a while. Maybe it's on a bulletin board or in your journal or a notebook. You could put it in a desk drawer or in your planner that once in a while you'll see. Okay, so I know that journaling is not for everyone. So I want to include three brave acts that you can take to show up for yourself to get a little more in touch with how you feel and what you think and want. So the first one is simply be still. Remember my saying, you can't hit a moving target? Now it's time to start addressing this. For some, they will call it meditation, but if that makes you uncomfortable or puts pressure on you, don't label it. You can call it mindfulness or simply being still. Research has shown that just five minutes of meditation or mindfulness in a day is enough to help clear the mind, 
improve mood, boost brain function, reduce stress, slow down the aging process, and help support a healthy metabolism. So where in your day can you be still for a few minutes? I know for some, they do have time in the first thing in the morning, right after they get out of bed, or even at night before they go to bed. And this is perfect. If you're like me, though, mornings can be really hectic with three kids to get out the door for school. So what about during the day? Where is there three to five minutes you can pause and just be still? For me, if I'm working from home, I will often go outside or to my window in between clients or activities that I'm doing on my computer and watch the red birds in the nest outside my window. If I'm in my office in between clients or student meetings, I pop a mint in my mouth and stare out the window until it's gone before welcoming the next person in. Being still helps me center to focus and simply just breathe. The second brave act, and I mentioned it earlier, is asking for help. Now, you may be saying, I don't need help, or it's easier just to do things by myself. And my high achieving, I can do anything independent self totally gets you on this one. I still want you to ask for help today. It doesn't have to be a huge task, but something that you would like someone in your life to do for you or with you. I sometimes ask my teenage daughter to help me unload the dishwasher. It gives me a few uninterrupted minutes to talk with her that I might not get otherwise. At work, I ask my colleagues for an opinion about an activity I'm going to teach or a student situation I'm struggling with. When we ask for help, we are vulnerable. And vulnerability isn't easy, but it can help us connect to ourselves and others. And sometimes just asking for help for someone to do something for me, as hard as that is, it takes something off my plate. And often the person's really appreciative that I've asked. The third brave act is memorize what it feels like in your body to feel courage. We haven't talked much about courage. Courage doesn't mean we are fearless. It's the feeling the fear and being willing to act anyway. Courage is the emotion. Bravery is the character trait that develops as we practice being courageous. Maya Angelou wrote, courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. Fear isn't logical and it lives in the body. So we must deal with it in the body. So think about a time when you felt courageous and acted on it. A time when you listened to that little voice inside of you or your gut and you did something, even though you knew you were a little bit afraid, maybe you talked to someone you never talked to before. Maybe you went someplace alone that you've never done before, and it worked out really well. If you can, talk about the situation out loud, just to yourself, and pay attention to where you feel the sensations in your body. Pay particular attention to where and what the sensations are. This is what it is for you to feel courage. Memorize it, label it, remind yourself of it, where it is in your body. The next time you feel some fear creep in, go back to those sensations. Go back to what the memory of feeling courageous felt like and use that to help you move forward in the way that you're choosing to. Memorize how it feels to be courageous, and then use that to create a brave act. Okay, so there you have it. Three actionable steps that you can do any time of the day to bravely show up for yourself and tune into what you need. I hope if you have some time, you'll journal and figure out what it is you want. You are allowed to want. We all are. If you want a handout describing today's actions, hop on over to my website, www.authenticandbravepodcast.com for a free download. I hope that you found a little tip or trick in today's talk that resonates with you and that you know you are not alone on your journey of self-discovery and self-care. Until next time, keep on practicing and keep on being authentic and brave. Thanks so much for tuning into the Authentic and Brave podcast. If you want more, head over to theauthenticandbravepodcast.com for show notes and sign up for the mailing list so you'll never miss an episode. If you're looking for inspiration, connection, and people like you and me, 
be sure to join my exclusive community on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at authenticandbravepodcast.com. This is Dr. Beth Russell signing off. See you next time.